I was sitting with one of my friends talking and he, he hit me with it all of a sudden. He said, can you answer a question? I said, what is it? He said, what is it every human wants? I said, a beautiful girl. <laughs> he said, not the girls. I said, oh yeah. Uh, he said, come on, what is it? I said, money. He said, not everybody wants money. I said, really? Whoa, whoa, whoa. who said it? Peace. That's it. That's exactly what he said. I said, what do you mean? He said, because everything else will boil down to that one word. You believe that happiness will give you peace. Happiness doesn't always give you peace, does it? You think it does, but what happens when it goes away? Well, you're having a lot of fun. Yay! Oh, it's a lot. And then later on, you're like, oh, man, I got it down over there. We all want peace, and this is why we do what we do. Because we think what I'm getting ready to do is going to make me feel better. I'm going to feel that peace. I'm not going to have any pain. I'm not going to have any agony. When somebody takes drugs for a few minutes, for a few minutes, they don't feel their body. And they're like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But then when it's gone, it's like, oh, man, it's worse than before. So now they need more drug. Oh, that feels pretty good for two seconds. So now I need more drug. And they keep going through this. Maybe you've seen somebody on drugs before. You know what it's about. It's not a funny thing. It's not a joke. Because what they really want, the drug gives them something like it for just a few minutes, but then it gets worse and worse. And sometimes the drugs are so powerful, he doesn't even survive the first time. This new crack that they got is really bad. One shot, dead. Islam is the solution because what? Because it speaks directly to the heart and solves the problems of the heart and the mind and brings the person together as one whole complete person, giving him what he needs, the tools that he needs in this life to, so that he can be the best human being that he can be. That's what Islam will do for anybody who will really understand it and put it to work. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa sallallahu wa ala ali wa sabi ajma'in ashadu la ilaha illallah ashadu muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluh Salaam alaikum Wow, Allah akbar Wow, this is an exciting crowd here You know what? Here we are, we're in Oslo, right? Oslo, that how you say it? Oslo or Oslo? Oslo Yeah not too slow, just us slow. Us slow? With a shush? Okay. If that's what you like, I like it. Works for me. We're here in Norway, and that's a good place to be. I'm coming to you from Helsinki in Finland. And before that, we were in the Uk. You know where's the Uk? I don't know why everybody else spells it. I like to say it. Uk. UK. Yeah. <laughs> Abdullah. I was listening to him introducing the, the to topic for today. And he was saying that Islam is the solution for the world. Did you hear that? Did he say that? Where is he? There. Fahid Anadalil, where is your proof? Huh? I thought you were going to give the proof, Sheikh. Oh, I thought we were going to have like a dialogue. Oh, is that I'm going to interview Fahid and I'm going to ask you and you're going to tell me where the proof is and make me look smart. No? Who knows where the proof is? First of all, is it true? Is Islam the solution for the world? 
Is it? How many, let's take a vote. How many say Islam is the solution for the world? Yay! Allah, Allah. How many say, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure. Anybody not sure about it? You guys are already convinced that I don't need to give a speech. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. No, I'm going to tell you a quick story before I get into the topic. Just kind of because some people are still settling down. They told me don't start this program till everybody got back from Salah. So if you're not here yet, raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Seriously. Well, it's not very serious because it's a joke. I'm getting ready to tell you a joke. So not serious. They said Joha. Everybody knows who's Joha, right? You heard about Joha, right? Yeah, the one in Sham, Blad Sham. Everybody make fun of him. They said that they got Joha one time. They said, yeah, Joha, we, we need Mahadra from you. We need a speech, Mahadra. He said, la. They said, Joha, min fadlik, please come up and give us a speech. He said, la. Finally, finally, they convinced him. And he came up and he stood there like this. He looked at the audience and he said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? They said, well, I know. He said, then why should I waste my time talking about it? <laughs> and he walked away. And then they went and got him and said, come back, come back, please, please. And they got him back up again. He looked at the audience again. He said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? They said, yes. He said, then why should I waste my time? <laughs> and he left again. So on another day, they got him and said, please, please. Now, the audience is getting wise now, right? So when he got up, he said, you know what I'm going to talk about? Half of them said, no. The other half said, yes. He said, the ones who know, tell the ones who don't know. Goodbye. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I like that one. That's funny. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Anyway... I was listening to the topic and I was saying, I'm not sure I like the title. I don't think it fits. Let me tell you why. Because I don't think the world is the problem. Allah, he created the universe, yes or no? The universe isn't having a problem. And he created the sun and the moon and the stars and the planet Earth, yes or no? So that's not where the problem is. Where's the problem? Who will tell me what the problem is? Us, right? The human beings on the earth. So can we, I'm, a, I'm just asking, it's up to you. Can we change the title and say Islam, the solution for mankind? Everybody like that one? I don't like it. No, because he said mankind. What about womankind? You gotta be fair. I gotta be fair, yes or no? That's right. How about if we say Islam is a solution for humans? Is that everybody like that one? No, because you still got man in there. Yeah, human. You notice that? So how about if I said Islam is the solution for everybody? How about that? Is that okay? But what about the people who don't accept it? So let's find out two things. What are we really talking about? It's a solution for who? And we're going to find out by finding out what the word Islam means. So we'll start out with that. What is Islam? Hmm? Now, we already know that a lot of Muslims, when you, somebody asks them, what is Islam anyway? They go, Islam is peace, brother. It's peace. We love everybody. Don't hurt me. Right? You heard this before, right? Islam is peace. Does Islam mean peace, yes or no? I'm, I can't hear you. I got a microphone. You don't. Does Islam mean peace or no? Yes and no. <laughs> half, half said no, and half said yes. You're working off that joke we just did. Let me, let me try to straighten this out, okay? 
When I walked up here a few minutes ago, do you remember what I said to you? When I walked out, remember what was the, what did I say? Salam alaikum, huh? And you said wa alaikum salam. Okay, I didn't hear anybody say Islam alaikum. Did you? No, because salam is peace. Yes. So what is Islam? And actually, anybody have a translation of Quran in English? Anybody have it? Anybody you got one with you? Look in it, and I'm going to show you something. No matter how good the translators work on bringing everything to English, and they try, they'll say God instead of Allah, which is weak. That's very weak, by the way. They'll say religion for the word deen. Again, that's kind of weak. But there's one word in Quran when they translate, they don't translate it. They leave it in the Arabic language. What word am I talking about? Islam. In chapter 3, verse 19, go look at it in a translation. In Adina, in the Lahil Islam. Right? But when you look at the translation, everything is there. It says, verily, the religion with God is Islam, Islam is still in Arabic. This is chapter 3, verse 85. Translation, they will say, you can look it up and see. The most translated, it will say God instead of Allah. That whoever wants a religion other than Islam, God will not accept it from them and hereafter they'll be with the losers. But the word Islam is still in Arabic language. The same is true throughout the Quran. We can mention a couple more. Islam Adina. Yep, there it is again. So what does the English translation say? On this day have I perfected for you your, even if they translate Dean and say way of life, which is pretty good. Perfected your way of life, conferred my biggest of favors upon you, and have chosen for you to submit to me in Islam. Still says Islam. And this goes all the way back to the Quran. Everywhere it says Islam in Arabic. They just used I-S-L-A-M in English and they left it. The problem, brothers and sisters, actually I'm so much older than you, I should call you kids, right? Somebody asked me the other day, they said, do you have, how many children do you have? I said, I don't have any. I have grandchildren. They said, well, how do you get grandchildren? You don't have any children. I said, well, my children aren't children anymore. They became adults. That's how they got to the grandchildren. Figure that one out, okay? You like that, huh? <laughs> how about this? I now have been told two days ago that my fourth great-grandchild is on the way. And they believe it's going to be a girl, maybe. I hope. I hope. I like girls. You like girls? <laughs> Better say yes. <laughs> I don't want to open that subject up. Anyway, let's, let's focus on this word Islam and find out why don't these people translate it? Okay, let's go get a dictionary. Shall we do that? Okay. There it is, right there, Islam. Oh, now we know why they don't translate it. Because it has too many words. There's no single word in English that means Islam. It's too big. It needs a paragraph or a page. And I've even seen a whole book written about the word Islam. It's big. It's very big. So that's the reason. But what about the person who doesn't know? I was talking with some folks yesterday. In fact, today on Facebook I had one that's coming to Islam. Didn't know the meaning. They said, you know, I believe in God and God's one, but why do I have to go with your religion? Why do I have to go with the Muslim religion? Well, first of all, it's not my religion. And it's not the Muslim religion. What it is it's Allah's deen, right? Allah said that he perfected and gave us his na'mah, 
his deen, his Islam. He gave it to us. So it's Allah's way. Now, what we found in the dictionary, look at this. First word, surrender. That's in Islam, did you know that? Heck, we didn't know that. That's amazing. Up to now, we just thought that was something we do, like Iraq, Afghanistan, airport security, surrender. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's a part of Islam. There's still more. In fact, there's four more, at least. The next one is submission. And this is where you're going to agree to some terms. And you're going to accept whatever God gives you. It's His command, you're going to do it. You don't say, why do I have to wear His job? Not for the boys, of course. But, why five times a day? That's because of what Allah wants. So Allah is how many times a day? At least five. Minimum, you can do more, but not less. And that's up to Allah, isn't it? So that's the submission. You're going to agree to that. And then the third thing is to obey. You will obey Allah in the best of your ability. Whatever commandments he gives us, we're going to do it. All right. And then what? This is the one I love, this one. Sincerity. Sincerity. It's in the word Islam. You have to be sincere with Allah or it won't count. Isn't that true? Is it true? Don't I have to be sincere with Allah? If I'm not sincere with Allah, then my Islam is no good. True or false? You can go move your head like that, okay? There you go. I knew you could do it. Anyway, you understand my point, right? Or do you? How many of you heard this? Islam spread by the... By the what? We all heard the same word, didn't we? Nobody said butter knife, did they? No, Islam spread by the... But it didn't really, did it? In fact, you know, that amazed me. It was one of the things that I did when I came into Islam. I was still comparing stuff in my Bible to the Quran, trying to understand what's what. And when I heard this, I said, let me go check that out. So first thing you do, of course, I went to my Bible and got the concordance of the Bible, Strong's Concordance of the Bible, it lists every single word in the Bible. You can do that, it's very easy. And even 22 years ago, before there was Google, we could still do word search, but it was on paper. <laughs> and I went through and I counted every time I found the word sword in the Bible. More than 200 times. Pay attention, boys and girls, I'm telling you something. More than 200 times in the Bible I found sword. And most of it in the New Testament, which is actually smaller than the Old Testament. And guess who is saying, get a sword, get a sword? Jesus, according to their book. Listen to this quote. It's in their book. They said, Jesus said, I did not come in peace. Don't think I came in peace. I did not come in peace, but with a sword. That's in their book. And another one. Whoever doesn't have a sword, sell your coat and buy a sword. It's in their book. And how many of you heard this? If you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. That's in their book. And he's telling them, get swords. And then another place, he, when they're fighting and the ear of one of the servants gets cut off in the big battle, and he said, okay, put the sword down. Sword, sword, sword. We're hearing about swords, right? So, okay, let me go look now in Quran. Now, in Quran, I'm going to try to be fair, and I'm going to look for any word in Arabic, which means sword. Everything, even khanja, you know khanja, the dagger. Saif, Muhammad, Hussam. How many words? 13, 14, 15 words, right? So let's get all the words in Quran that have any meaning of sword or dagger or something like that. Add them up and see how close we come or more than what the, what the Bible has. How many, I'm going to let you guys guess. 
How many times is the word sword or something like that in the Quran? More than 100? How many say more than 100? How many say more than 50? How many say zero? There's no word for anything like that in the Quran at all. So if you're saying that our book preaches something like that, then, and you're saying that whichever religion is doing this, having this, then I'll ask you to figure out which religion spread by the sword. <laughs> oh, 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 ow, ow, that had to hurt. So sincerity. Now, can you spread sincerity by force? Huh? Somebody come to you and said, listen, you're going to do it and you're going to like it. You can say, I'll do it, but I'm not going to like it. You can't make me like it. I can fake it, right? I really like it. No, I don't. Huh? You cannot make anybody have feelings. You can't do that. You have to be the one to initiate that. Sincerity has to come from you. That means nobody is a Muslim unless they want to be. Nobody is a Muslim unless they want to be. Is that true or false? Because if they're being forced, that's not Islam. And now let's take the fifth word. So the fifth word is peace. It's there. Salam is there. But it means the salam that you're going to have between you and Allah after you do the other things. You surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity. And then no matter what, after you did all of that, after you did that, what is going to be your position? Allah maybe give you a disease. A'udhu billah. Or allow, maybe you lose your job. A'udhu billah. Maybe some drastic thing happens in your life. And you said, ah, oh, but I came to the right religion and I'm doing this. How come Allah did this to me? This is not Islam. It's not this way. It's not the way. Is that the right way? No. Because all of us have difficulties and sometimes it gets really serious. And Allah does that for one reason only. You know why? Are you going to turn to him? Because if you do, you win. You win. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said what means in English, he said ajib, which means amazing, astonishing. The condition of the movement, the movement, the believer, astonishing condition. Because only good is happening to them. Only good is happening to the believer because when anything comes his way that he likes it, he says, Alhamdulillah, shukr Allah. He's happy with Allah. And he expresses it properly. He gives the credit to Allah. This is good. But if anything happens that's a difficulty for him, some calamity, some big trial falls on him, he makes sabr. He'll be patient. You know the story of the prophet Ayub, right? Job in the Bible is similar to the story that we have in Islam. Ayub was so patient. No matter what happened to him, he was still patient, believing in Allah. And he didn't complain to anybody. Yeah. Imagine. And Prophet ﷺ said, continuing the hadith, that it's good for this person, even though, even though he had a bad a difficulty with it, because he made this patience, then it's all good for him. But it's only in the case of the believer. So this is a beautiful thing in Islam. And it's a part of the word Islam itself. So the things that we're finding out about in this conference and different things that we study about Islam, we find it's all in the word Islam itself. Because if you understand what Islam is meaning, to believe there really is a law. The one and only creator, sustainer of the universe. The one and only who really knows what's inside of you. And the one and only that can solve your problems. The real God. To believe in Him. And surrender to Him. Submit to Him. Obey His commandments. And, but do it with a sincere heart. Really do it out of, you know what? Allah want me to do it, I'm going to do it. Alhamdulillah. And then, be in peace with whatever comes from that. Now, 
Truthfully, I can see where that really would help all of the human beings on this earth. One of the ways is to have the correct belief. When we talk about the belief in Islam, it is not just that we believe in God, because almost every religion has a belief in some kind of a God, right? They all have that. But almost every time you find that the God is something in the creation, or somehow connected to the creation, or not perfect. Whereas for Islam, he's so uniquely one, there's nothing in the creation that's like Allah. Nothing is like Allah. Even when we try to describe Allah, we can't do that. We can't because how do you describe Allah? He's, for us, undescribable. We, we can say what he said about himself. If Allah says in the Quran, you'll find this in, uh, I think it's Surah An-Nur, Allah is talking about the face of Allah. But even then, we don't want you to come up and say, yeah, you know, it has a nose or cheeks and stuff. We didn't do that. Because it didn't say that. You just say what Allah said. We're, we're tough on that, aren't we? I mean, somebody say it the wrong way, we'd be like, hey, 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 stop for Allah, brother. That's not the Akira. Work on that, huh? <laughs> because it's serious. When I was a Christian, people didn't care. They didn't care if you said, oh, you know, and I've heard them say stuff like, you know, uh, God uh, was talking to me the other day, and you're like, what? I don't know if any of you remember the famous debate with Jimmy Swaggart and Ahmed Didat. Have any of you seen it? Have you seen it? Yeah. In that debate, if you got the whole thing, some of it has abbreviated, but if you got the whole one on it, at the end of it, Jimmy Swaggart says, the other night, I, I believe God is talking to me, he's saying to me, he's saying, Jimmy, now you tell them Muslims, I like, are you serious? He even gave him a, a Louisiana accent. I mean, it was like, I can't believe this guy. I wanted to focus on this, though, because the the most important part about Islam is what we believe. Because a lot of good people out there, they do good deeds, they're kind, they're generous, they're sweethearts, we like them. Even they're not Muslim, but they're nice and, you know, easy to get along with. And people will say, well, why can't this person go to paradise? I mean, he's nice, he didn't do anything wrong. Everybody likes him. What's wrong? You know what's wrong? Uh, first of all, we're not the ones that created him, are we? We're not the ones that created him. The one who created him is waiting to get his rights. Allah's right is that we worship none but him alone without partners. That's what la ilaha illallah means. So no matter how nice he is to us, on the day of judgment, what's he going to collect from us? So be like, hey, you were a nice guy, so what? I can't help you out. You didn't worship your creator. Allah said in the Quran, clearly, So clearly Allah is telling us, I did not create the jinn and mankind except for ibadah, for worship. Now some... They want to attack Islam. Did you know that there's some people attacking Islam? No, really? <laughs> yeah, right. One of the things they will say is, well, what kind of God needs to have, create people just to worship him? You get the wrong slant on it. You missed the point. Actually, he has angels that worship him day and night. That's all they do, their whole creation. They don't want to stop. They just want to keep worshiping Allah. They're happy to do that. But Allah created us so that whatever we do, this is going to be our test. Whatever you worship, and every soul worships something. Check it out. I didn't say everybody has a religion. But everybody has a deen, and there's a difference. Religion, you know, man-made religions and so on. We know what that is. 
But everybody has a dean. Because dean means what you do, your way. That's what you are, that's what you're all about. Whether you believe or don't believe, you still have a way, things that you do. There's some people who worship rocks, sticks, stones, bones, stars, planets, fire. They worship those kind of things. And that's pretty easy to, to knock it off and say, you know, that's not real, that's not God, that's not God. But other people who will reject religion, they will reject the belief in God, but they'll still make an Elah. Elah is the word in Arabic for God, not Allah. In the Elah is what? Anything you worship. This could be an education. Huh? Yeah, you want to get a PhD so bad, you'll do anything to get it. You want to get a degree so bad, you don't care that you stole money from your mother. You don't care that you ripped people off. You don't care that you cheated people. You don't care what you did to get what you wanted. You got what you wanted. Yeah, man, I'm a doctor now. You're going to say doctor when you see my face come in here. That's because that's all he wanted. And there are people like that. They want their position. Maybe he wants to be a big shot in the military, huh? Maybe he wants to be big shot in the neighborhood. I got a big car. See my car? <laughs> when there's this great big stretch limousine going by, and the rest of us are walking, right? We're like, okay, Willie runs out of gas. Yeah. For sure, there are things that people worship besides a physical ilah like you might think about. It could be a house, a car. Could be a job, could be education, could be their position in society, but everybody worships something. Especially those who claim there is no God at all. Now with the Billah. Do you know, how many of you heard that last week the atheists in the UK now have declared that they are a religion? Did you hear about that? They're a religion. They're allowed now to act like a religion. They have their meetings. They have tax exempt. They have, yeah. They're saying, we're doing everything. We just don't believe in God, but we got everything else going on. Believe in philosophy. Believe in theories. They believe in monkeys became people, things like that. This is their thing. I see a lot of youth with us today, and I'm so happy about that. And I don't want to bore them, so I'm going to wrap it up pretty quick. But I want to come back to why is Islam really the solution for human beings? Because it also provides something for us. There's something inside of us that knows when we make mistakes. If you want to call it your conscience, some people call it their conscience. Some people will say it's like their, uh, you know, record keeper, keeping up with what's going on. Something that tells you between good and bad, but everybody has it. You know when you've lied, you know when you've cheated, you know when you've hurt somebody's feelings, you know when you said bad things about somebody. All of us do. Every one of us knows that we do that. And inside of us, that builds up. And it has a tendency to do what? Our Prophet Islam told us clearly, when a person lies, it puts a black mark on their heart. And they continue lying until the whole thing is black. He said in another hadith that there's a morsel of flesh inside the human body that if it's good, then the whole of the matter is good. But if it's bad, then the whole of the matter is rotten. And that morsel of flesh is the heart. So this is how important it is for us to understand why human beings do what they do. Do you know why? Because they want to. That's why they do what they do. Why does a person smoke? Because they're addicted. No, because they want to. Why does a person drink alcohol? Because it's fun, he looks cool, and blah, blah, blah. No, he wants to. That's why he does it. Bottom line, it's because this is what they want to do. The addiction comes later. But even then, if they really wanted to, they'd find a way to quit. Human beings really are operating out of something inside of them that's telling them, this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. And when you go against it, then you'll start having problems that you can't solve. And every single human being wants the same thing. 
हु नोज वॉट इट इज हा वॉट हैप्पीनेस नॉट एक्झॅक्टली यू यू रिअल क्लोज द सक्सेस यूर ऑल्सो रिअल क्लोज बट दॅट्स नॉट द वर्ड आय लुकिंग फॉर हा प्लेजर You guys are on it though you're getting around this thing. You know, it happened to me many years ago, maybe 50 years ago I was sitting with one of my friends talking and he he hit me with it all of a sudden. He said, "Can you answer a question?" I said, "What is it?" He said, "What is it every human wants?" I said, "A beautiful girl." <laughs> he said, "Not the girls." I said, "Oh yeah." Uh he said, "Come on, what is it?" I said, "Money." He said, not everybody wants money. So really? Whoa, oh, oh, oh. who said it? Peace. That's it. That's exactly what he said. I said, what do you mean? He said, because everything else will boil down to that one word. You believe that happiness will give you peace. Happiness doesn't always give you peace, does it? You think it does, but what happens when it goes away? Well, you're having a lot of fun. Yay! Oh, it's a lot. And then later on you're like, "Oh man, I got to down over there." We all want peace, and this is why we do what we do, because we think what I'm getting ready to do is going to make me feel better. I'm going to feel that peace. I'm not going to have any pain. I'm not going to have any agony. When somebody takes drugs for a few minutes, for a few minutes they don't feel their body, and they're like, "Yeah, that's what I'm talking about." But then when it's gone, it's like, "Oh man, it's worse than before." So now they need more drug. Oh, that feels pretty good for two seconds, so now I need more drug. And they keep going through this. Maybe you've seen somebody on drugs before. You know what it's about. It's not a funny thing. It's not a joke. Because what they really want, the drug gives them something like it for just a few minutes, but then it gets worse and worse. And sometimes the drugs are so powerful, he doesn't even survive the first time. This new crack that they got is really bad. one shot dead so this is why according to the psychiatrist they tell us that this is the motivator people will do what they do for one of two reasons either they will do something hoping that they're going to get a reward a benefit or they won't do something cuz they're afraid that they're going to lose something so they boil it down to this fear of a loss hope of a gain you want to gain something but you don't want to lose anything kind of like playing the stock market kind of like betting on horses all of that's not in islam but you get the idea how it works what does islam give us that will solve the problem this is what's so key brothers sisters listen closely this is the end of the talk and you need this part to share with the world if you really want this to work Don't leave it in here. Don't leave it in this old winery with the beer barrels out there, whatever those are. Take it home with you and use this. Islam is the solution because what? Because it speaks directly to the heart and solves the problems of the heart and the mind and brings the person together as one whole complete person, giving him what he needs, the tools that he needs in this life. so that he can be the best human being that he can be that's what islam will do for anybody who will really understand it and put it to work there are many muslims who have a name like muhammad abdul aziz or sara yasmin something like this but that doesn't mean they're muslim it means they have a muslim name many have it on their passport muslim And when they fly on an airplane they get a muslim meal but does that really mean they're muslim the fact that you don't eat pork doesn't mean you're a muslim jews also don't eat pork true or false vegetarians also don't eat pork because they don't eat any meat at all the real muslim is the muslim in the heart first true or false but but as soon as it's real here it needs to manifest on the outside so i don't want to hear this stuff about well you know talk to a sister about hijab 
And all of a sudden she says, I have his job at the heart. Hey, my job's in my heart. Call a heart surgeon over here. And get, get him over here and get that out of there quick. <laughs> what is that? And for our brothers that are shaving off the beard, I don't know if you know this or not, it's a hadith telling you not to do that. It tells you clearly, listen, it doesn't say grow your beard, it says leave it alone. It says leave it alone. Leave it. Allah will grow it. If he doesn't grow it, it's not your problem. But don't be out there whacking it off. You might say, well, that's a small thing. All the small things add up to a big thing, don't they? Because it's the attitude that you have. Have you said, well, I could get one little tattoo? Huh? I get one little piercing, you know? Huh? But you know and I know this is not something Allah likes. So if you know you're going to be meeting Allah one day, why would you take that risk? Why would you gamble? Why would you put yourself in such a position for no good reason? Because truthfully, Nobody appreciates you doing those silly things. Oh, your friends will be like, oh, that's so cool. You look so, doesn't that look cool? And as soon as you walk away, they go, idiot. They'll make fun of you. Look, he pokes those, those holes in his face. <laughs> Drew all those pictures all over him when he tries to get it off. <laughs> it's not cool. Whether it's drugs, alcohol, tattoos, piercings, Lying, cheating, stealing, all of these things are wrong. And you already knew that before you started. And I know because I get a lot of emails every day from you guys, or your age group anyway, asking me, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? One of the things I used to get a lot of asking me from the sisters, is it okay to shave the eyebrows? You know, pluck the eyebrows out. Huh? I used to get that one like all the time. Why? Because you knew there must be something wrong with it, otherwise you wouldn't ask. Something inside of you is telling you there must be something wrong with that. Let me ask. If you find yourself asking the same question everybody else is asking, then what does that tell you? Inside of you. So Islam speaks to the inside of the person. It speaks to the mind. It speaks to the heart. And it solves your problems provided one thing, one thing. You have to put it into action. So let us ask Allah to make us of the people who will really surrender to him, submit to him, obey him, be sincere with him, and then be in peace with him whatever we get. Let us be the examples to the others to see what real Islam is in our lives. What do you think? Huh? Ameen. Ameen. Allah give us the success, the tawfiq. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fi lakirti hasan wa kina dama nar. Rabbana la tu akhid nain nasina wa aktana. Rabbana wa la tahamilla alayna isran kama hamalto ala ladina min kablina. Rabbana wa la tuhamilla malata katulana bih wa fu ana wa firana wa hamna anta maulana fincerna. We ask Allah that he make it easy for us in this life. Don't burden us with more than we can handle. Give us good in this life and good in the next life. And let us be the examples, the real examples of our Prophet Muhammad to the others. Inshallah. Amin. Salaam alaikum.